In the linked video, we took a closer look at solid solution alloys. These are characterized by the fact that the alloying elements are completely soluble in the base metal in the solid state. As an example of such a solid solution alloy, the copper-nickel alloy system has been considered, which shows a complete solid solution series over the entire alloy system. The phase diagram of the copper-nickel alloy system is shown in the figure. Due to the complete solubility of the alloying element, it might be assumed that the nickel is homogeneously distributed in the solid solution microstructure. In fact, it turns out that within a grain, the alloy concentration varies to a greater or lesser extent. For example, while the center of the grain has a relatively high nickel content, the peripheral areas of the grain tend to be low in nickel. Such differences in concentration within a grain are called crystal segregation or microsegregation. Since the alloy concentration has a significant effect on the material properties, the center of the grain will have different properties than the edge region. Depending on the degree of segregation, this can result in unpredictable or undesirable alloy properties. Therefore, crystal segregation should be avoided. The reasons why crystal segregation occurs during the solidification of alloys are discussed in the following. The formation of segregations can be clearly understood using the phase diagram. To illustrate this, the solidification of a copper-nickel alloy containing 30% nickel will be considered. For clarity, we enlarge the relevant part of the phase diagram where solidification takes place. While above the liquidus line in the area marked in red, the alloy is initially completely liquid, below the solidus line, in the area marked in blue, the microstructure is completely solidified. The actual solidification takes place in the area marked in yellow between the liquidus and solidus lines. The animation schematically shows the nickel atoms in blue and the copper atoms in red. In the melt, there is initially a homogeneous mixture of both types of atoms. When the liquidus line is reached, solidification begins and both components form a common lattice structure. As an example, we consider the formation of such a solid solution from the melt. During solidification, the solidus line can be used to determine the chemical composition of the solid solution formed. A horizontal line is drawn up to the solidus line at a given temperature. From this intersection, we draw a vertical line to the concentration axis and read the nickel content in the solid solution. Let us first look at the solidification process from the solidification temperature of 1238 degrees Celsius to a temperature of 1230 degrees Celsius. The solid solution formed up to this point has an average nickel content of 39.1%. Ultimately, this nickel concentration is only an average over the entire grain formed to that point. Let us now consider further solidification up to a temperature of 1220 degrees Celsius. In this temperature range, the layer marked in yellow has solidified. Whereas the grain previously contained an average of 39.1% nickel, the average nickel content of the entire grain is now only 36.4%. Therefore, the newly solidified layer must have a lower nickel concentration than the previously formed layer, resulting in a lower average value. In fact, the newly solidified layer has a nickel content of only 34.2%. Of course, this is again only an average value. This value cannot be determined directly from the phase diagram. However, it can be determined indirectly using the lever rule to calculate the phase fractions. This is done by determining what percentage of the alloy solidifies in a given temperature range. The nickel concentrations weighted by the solidified mass fractions must then equal the average nickel content. From this, the average nickel concentration of the solidified layers can then be determined. Let us now consider the further cooling to a temperature of 1,210 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the solid solution solidified up to this point consists of an average of 33.7% nickel, whereas before it was 36.4%. Obviously, the solidified layer in this temperature range must have a lower nickel concentration than the previous layer. In this case, the nickel content in the newly formed layer is actually only 29.2%. Further cooling to 1,200 degrees Celsius reduces the average nickel concentration to only 31%. In this case, the newly solidified layer has a nickel content of only 24.3%. When the end of solidification is finally reached at 1,196 degrees Celsius, the average nickel content has obviously dropped to the alloy concentration of 30% nickel. In this case, however, the last solidified layer has an average nickel content of only 21.1%.
It can be seen that the chemical composition of the solid solution varies from the grain center at the beginning of solidification to the edge zone at the end of solidification. Therefore, the nickel concentration decreases continuously from the center of the grain to the edges. In this way, the formation of crystal segregation can be explained. In principle, segregation could be avoided by sufficiently slow cooling, as the resulting differences in concentration can always be equalized by diffusion processes. In reality, however, solidification processes cannot be infinitely slow, so concentration differences in the microstructure are inevitable. In such cases, a subsequent heat treatment at sufficiently high temperatures can partially compensate for the concentration differences that have formed. This is known as diffusion annealing.